In this video, we are cruising through even more of Pico CTF 2022. In the last video, we wrapped up another cryptography challenge. Super simple, kind of adapting our code from the previous, previous episode video showcasing modular arithmetic and some of those shenanigans. In this video, we're gonna keep cruising, so let's dive in. Okay, I am back on my terminal. Uh, previously, I was in that basic mod challenge. I'm gonna go ahead and actually move that to a basic mod complete. Again, just to tie up and, and close the loop on the things that I should have done in the previous video. You guys know the drill. This is the next challenge that we're working through, buffer overflow zero. It is in the binary exploitation category. And it says, hey, smash the stack. Let's start off simple. Can you overflow the correct buffer? The program is available here. You can view the source here and connect to it remotely with this command uh, as follows. So let's go ahead and grab the links that we could download this here. I'll move into the binary exploitation category, make a directory for buffer overflow, if I could type, zero, move into that directory, and let's use wget to download this vuln program. Now, if you haven't done it before, uh, the file command will tell you a little bit about what a file is in Linux. We can tell, oh, this is a 32-bit program. It's an ELF binary or executable link format. I might have that al uh, algorithm wrong, acronym wrong, goodness. Uh, and it is just a program that we could go ahead and run and execute. It is not marked as executable at the moment. So if I try to dot slash vuln, it won't let me, but I could, chmod plus x and add, literally add with a plus sign, an executable bit, changing the modification values for the file. Vuln present there. Now when I hit ls, you can see it is brought together in a green syntax highlighting. And with that, I could dot slash vuln. Uh, this actually needs us to create a local flag.txt copy, but we're gonna end up using this on the remote system, which already has a flag for us. Anyway, let's download the source. Again, right-clicking and grabbing this link here. W, get to download. You know the drill. Let's open this one up in our text editor, Sublime. Okay, so more C code, uh, calling back to maybe the first video in this series, includes to grab more library stuff, defining a constant for a flag size maximum value, character array with this um, actual size denoted the length of the flag. And we have a couple handlers for seg faults. This is actually a sig, seg, or maybe a signal when a signal was re received for a segmentation fault or when the program crashes or spits up, breaks, vomits, dies, whatever. That is what's actually going to print out our flag. So that is our win condition. That's how we know we can get the flag if we actually cause a segmentation fault, crash the program. Okay. And we have a vuln function that takes in some input. This is a character array. You can tell by the pointer or asterisk here. Uh, and actually defines a buff variable with 16 bytes in length. So we copy the input that's passed in into the buffer. Knowing that it's a length of 16, maybe that's something we could just break. Uh, here is the check inside of the main function. Hey, if we open the flag.txt file, uh, we want to get the contents, but if we weren't able to open it, then we would get this message, kind of as we saw locally, please create your own flag.txt. Good enough. Then we use fgets, fgets to read the contents of the flag, and we supply the signal handler, actually set up the plumbing for that. If we receive a segmentation fault, it will execute this function, which is our handler, which will display the flag. Again, our win condition. Now we go ahead and get an effective user ID or effective group ID. Probably they're doing this so on the back end it is able to read the flag naturally on their server side, whatever. Uh, and we retrieve an input. We flush standard output so it's all displayed, something that you can work through so the remote service actually gives this message to you. And we define a buffer one of 100 characters in length, 100 bytes. We use gets as the function to retrieve information from that. And then we pass it to Vuln. Um, gets is a bit interesting because uh, gets is a dangerous function. Now, I don't know if folks are familiar with that. Let me run man gets to check out the manual page for that. Can I please, goodness gracious, I can't. What is it? I'm just gonna brute force the numbers to try and get the like Linux like it's, it's just, do I not have it downloaded? Is that my problem? All right, we'll go to the internet. We'll ask Uncle Google. Let's go look at the C gets function. I'll grab the uh, a man page, hopefully showcased. 
excuse me, it's not going to give me a result for that. Man page, the manual page. There it is. Linux man page, here we go. Get a string from standard input. However, this function is deprecated. It is old, it is not recommended, it is not one that you could use. In fact, the description literally says, never ever use this function. <laughs> Gets will read a line from standard input, you typing on your keyboard, into the buffer pointed to by S, the string or the character buffer, character array that is uh, passed in as an argument. And it'll read it until either a terminating new line or an end of file EOF is per replacing uh, with a null byte. New line or EOF will be replaced with a null byte. But it does not check if a buffer overrun or a buffer overflow is performed or in place. It actually defines as, hey, if you want to look at the bugs section down below. Uh, let me do that. We'll scroll down. This literally says never ever use this gets function. Because it's impossible to tell without knowing the data in advance how many characters gets will read in, and because gets will continue to store characters past the end of the buffer, it's extremely dangerous to use. It's been used to break computer security. Use fgets instead, which fgets will allow you to pass in a known length, or what you can expect to retrieve from your input. It's, what is it? For more information, check out use of inherently dangerous functions. <laughs> that's that's wild. So we knew looking back at the source code, our original buffer that we read in, sure, it's a hundred bytes long and we can read in buff one of that with gets. It's not going to check the bounds if we actually entered a hundred bytes. It gets passed into volm then, which uses str copy, and that might cram up 16 bytes. So I'm interested and curious, will both of these break? Let's do it. Let's go ahead and go back to the Pico CTF challenge and let's grab this remote connection string so I can just use netcat in my terminal. It wants to know an input and I'll say, please subscribe. How many characters is that? We got what, six here, seven, and then subscribe. How many did we count earlier? That's nine, yeah. Uh, so 16 characters on the dot, program will exit now. Let's enter please subscribe with a couple exclamation points at the end. All it needed was 16 bytes because str copy is another dangerous function. And I'll, let's dive into that one just as well. Gets we knew was bad to begin with. Uh, maybe it'll break even earlier if we just hit through the 100 bytes. But let's check out str copy. SCR copy, copy is a string. And I tried to allude to this, right? Sure, it'll return a character array buffer, but it has a destination and a source that are passed in. SCR copy function copies a string pointed to by the source, including the terminating null byte, to the buffer pointed to by destination. The strings may not overlap, and the destination string must be large enough to receive the copy. Beware of buffer overruns or buffer overflows. And this is where, again, you can see bugs. They denote here the strn copy function is similar, except that at most n bytes of the source are copied. This adds a limit. This sets a maximum. This says, hey, you cannot copy more than n bytes. There's a maximum length there. If the length is less than n, sure, strn copy will do it properly. Um, and there's a, a fine implementation of that just as well. But scrolling down to, again, that bugs section, if the destination string of str copy is not large enough, then anything could happen. Overflowing fixed length string buffers is a favorable, excuse me, favorite cracker technique for taking complete control of the machine. This is old, right? Modern security mechanisms, hey, you'll know when there's a stack smashing based off stack canaries. A little token or a little special string that'll say, hey, if this value is overwritten or clobbered, Mm, we can tell that evil's going on. Not the case and how this binary was compiled, how this was created. I think that's what, F no stack protector? Let me show you that super quick. Let me actually, can I create, I'll copy, I'll, I'll move Voln to, oh goodness, Voln original. And I'll GCC our own Voln.c. And this actually will display some straight up warnings. Uh, some of that's, hey, based on the group ID or effective group ID. But the one down here, it says, uh, even below, our linker is telling us, look, the gets function is dangerous and should not be used. 
Did it actually even compile it? It did. Okay, cool. So a dot out, I can run, and we need a a flag dot text. Let me just echo flag. Please subscribe. And I'll redirect that out to our own local flag.txt. Now, when I run this program, hey, we have our input. Hello, program will exit. Hello, program will exit. Did I have uh, enough values there? I'm not sure. Let's try and send some more shenanigans, and that will read our flag for us. How did that compile? Did I do something stupid there? No. Elf 64 bit LSB position independent executable. Blah, blah, blah. What? I'm a dumbo. I must be doing something, or I must be misunderstanding something as I try to show you something worthwhile. Come on, it's not gonna give me the stack smashing detected? I can't even check dmessage? Whatever, I'm just gonna make a fool of myself. Okay. Well, forgive me. Maybe Cali, I, I don't even wanna postulate, I think, I'm, I'm clearly uh, a horrible teacher. <laughs> I clearly don't know what I'm doing. I've always said, you know what? I'm a, I'm a security charlatan. Uh, regardless, we have retrieved our flag. We've retrieved the legitimate flag. Uh, when I use netcat, I'll use a control R in the terminal to be able to do a quick reverse search. Typed in NC or netcat and found the previous iteration. If I just spammed it with, hey, a whole crap load of A's, I get my legitimate flag. Overflows aren't that bad. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's it. Those are the dangerous functions that we've learned about STR copy and gets. Uh, we're still going to be end up breaking it, even if we are at 100 or not. Uh, let me check out how much did I supply there. I'm using Python super quick. Length of 43. All right, let's amp that up. Here's 129 as a string. And of course, look, we're going to end up crashing the thing just as well. I'll use netcat once again, slapping it in. Gets is going to break. Any of these functions will break. But we have our flag, and that is what we can go ahead and submit and call it a day for that challenge. I don't know if you learned something new or not. Uh, again, hey, we're still kind of at the baby steps here. We're on our training wheels, but now we're learning a little bit more about those dangerous functions and other things that you shouldn't use in C low-level programming languages. Hooray, we've earned 100 points. <laughs> Hey, thank you so much for watching, everybody. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please do those YouTube algorithm things. Please like the video, comment, subscribe. Those are things that really, really help the channel grow. Support, share, all things that, I don't know, help me motivated, help me stay motivated to keep putting out stuff like this for you. Thanks so much, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. I love you. Take care.